Hey, it's Carrie from Lovely Etc. Today I'm going to show you how to make a DIY stenciled doormat. And in particular, I am making a Happy Holidays doormat, which is perfect for Christmas or whatever other holiday you celebrate. But the same method would work really well for any doormat that you want to stencil with multiple colors of paint. A lot of DIY doormat tutorials out there are all about stenciling or painting a black design on a plain background and I wanted to make something a little more colorful and a little different. And I'm also going to show you how to seal your doormat when you're finished so that the painted design really lasts for a long time. This video is sponsored by Wall Cuts, which is a stencil company that has all kinds of great stencil designs including a lot of other really great doormat stencils. I am using a reusable stencil for this project, which of course the best thing about that is that you can reuse the stencil over and over. And one of my favorite tricks whenever you're using a reusable stencil is to use repositionable spray adhesive. The spray adhesive helps hold it in place as you're stenciling so that it's not moving around and so that no paint is getting where you don't want it to be. I wasn't totally sure if the spray adhesive was gonna work as well when stenciling a doormat. If you're stenciling something smooth like wood or metal, the spray adhesive really helps seal the edges so that no paint can get underneath in addition to holding it in place. But with a doormat, there's so much texture, I didn't really know if the adhesive was gonna hold well. But I'm pleasantly surprised to see that it does hold well. Of course, it doesn't have the same kind of seal it would have on a totally smooth surface, but it works really well for holding your entire stencil in place and keeping it adhered as you're painting. Just be sure that you're using a repositionable temporary spray adhesive because you're not trying to permanently glue this stencil to the doormat. That is not gonna give you good results. You want something that will stick until you're done with it and then it's easy to remove. As you're placing your stencil on your doormat, make sure that it's nice and straight, that it's placed where you want it and centered. When it comes to what kind of paint you should use for your doormat, you have a few different choices. You can use an outdoor paint, like outdoor acrylic paint you can get at a craft store, or if you have outdoor latex paint left over from a house project, that's fine too. You can skip using any kind of sealer, and your doormat will probably last for about a year, which really I think is pretty good because even the doormats that I buy from, you know, Target or whatever store that have pre-printed graphics on them, usually only lasts for a year or two. And it's not because the paint is necessarily wearing off. It's because these fiber doormats, the fibers wear down as you wipe your feet on them over and over and over. And so as the fiber wears down, the graphic obviously wears down as well. So that's gonna happen no matter if you use a sealer or not. Okay, so option one is use outdoor paint. Another option is to use something called Flex Seal. So Flex Seal is not actually paint. Flex Seal is liquid rubber in a can, as it says. It is a spray or brush on sealer adhesive that goes on as a liquid and then creates a rubberized waterproof seal. It can be used for sealing up leaks in RVs or roofs or foundations. And people have also discovered that it works great for making DIY doormats. You can get the spray version in black or white or a couple of other colors. So some crafters, especially people that sell the doormats that they paint, just use Flex Seal as their paint. It is a bit more expensive, but it lasts well. In my case, I'm going to be painting my doormat multiple colors, and Flex Seal does have a pretty limited color palette. It doesn't have necessarily the colors that I want to use, and also it would get pretty expensive trying to buy a whole bunch of different cans of Flex Seal to paint my doormat. So instead, I'm going with another option, which is using regular paint and sealing it with clear spray Flex Seal. So in the end, I'm gonna use this as the sealer and it should, no matter what paint I've used, seal everything really well so that it's protected and will last much longer than would have otherwise. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing that you wanna do is grab a painter's palette or some paper plates or something that you can pour your paint out onto. When you're stenciling a doormat, the best type of brush to use is a stencil brush. We'll basically just have a whole lot of bristles with a wide surface area that is flat and the bristles are all straight and that's so you can easily apply the paint up and down as you're stenciling you want to make sure your brush is going up and down straight up and down over your design so that it's not squishing paint under the stencil which defeats the whole point so normally when you're stenciling on a smooth surface like wood or metal one of the most important rules is that you don't want to have too much paint on your brush 
However, stenciling a doormat is very different. The doormat is made of fibrous material and there's a lot of texture and it really soaks up the paint. So you need to use a lot more paint than you would for a normal stenciling project. The colors that I chose to use for my doormat are white, red, and turquoise with a tiny bit of yellow. And I chose these colors because this stencil has a really great retro feel to it. And all my favorite vintage Christmas decorations have this red and turquoise color palette going on. So I thought it would really complement the design well. I will say that anytime you paint basically anything white, including cabinets, furniture, and now doormats, it does take a little bit more work to get really good paint coverage where the doormat is white. I did two coats of paint using the stencil brush and then I came back with a smaller brush and just kind of concentrated on some of the darker shadowy areas. For the red and blue paint, I just did two really quick layers of paint. So the white does take longer. If you don't want to deal with that, you can use a darker color, but I love the way the white pops. So I'm still happy I chose white, even though it's a little more work. And now the moment of truth, no matter how many stencil projects I do, I always get a little nervous when it's time to take off the stencil and see the results. All right, it looks really good. I'm super pleased. The stencil lines turned out really clear and clean, and I am excited to get this thing sealed and finished. So once the paint on my doormat is completely dry, I am moving it outside to seal it with the Flex Seal. Flex Seal is a spray chemical, so whenever possible, it's best to use it outside. And the instructions also recommend that you use a protective mask and gloves and protective clothing just to make sure it doesn't get on your skin. When you're using it, you wanna shake it up really well before you start and then spray thin, even layers, making a sweeping motion side to side. Just like with any other spray product, you don't want to spray it on super thick or you're not gonna get great results. It's best to do two to three coats of Flex Seal. I ended up doing two on my doormat. I feel good about it. It feels like there's a good seal. So here is my finished doormat. I am really happy with how it turned out. The colors are nice and bright. It has that great vintage feel that I was going for, and I'm really excited to use it this holiday season. I was a little bit worried that the Flex Seal might give it an odd texture, but actually it still feels really good. It mostly feels the same as it did before. So I feel pretty confident that it's going to work well as a doormat, that it's going to last, that my nice white paint is going to look nice and white for a couple of holiday seasons at least, and I'm thrilled with how this turned out. If you did this project along with me, you might want to head over to my video about cleaning stencils next because the cleaning the stencil is always my least favorite part of the project, but I have figured out some tips that make it much easier. And if you haven't, I would love for you to subscribe to my channel, Lovely Etc., where I share inexpensive DIY ideas for creating a home that you love.